Well, good morning, everyone. I hate to interrupt that wonderful fellowship. Good morning. Yeah, there you go. Whether you're uh, here today with us in person or at home online, we are so grateful for the privilege to be able to worship together, worship our great God. I know there are uh, several who are on vacation, and maybe they're checking in online, or or uh, maybe they're just in the, uh, with us in spirit. But either way, we are going to worship our Lord today and experience what he has for us. Amen? Just a couple of reminders uh, for us. Um, this coming Saturday is uh, Geraldine's Memorial at 11 a.m. right here. Um, we're going to treasure, celebrate her life, and uh, her family would appreciate if we came and joined us. Guys, find your seats, and there you go. Uh, so 11 a.m. on Saturday, that'll... That'll be a special time as we remember uh, Geraldine's life. And then, uh, of course, the family camp is coming up. We, we, we do have all our sites reserved, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't, don't have alternatives. Uh, if you really want to camp, you might be able to find one of the, us campers that have a site and see if you can uh, join them. Uh, another alternative is to come up, which many people are going to do, come up during the day. Each and every day, you're welcome to join in the fun and festivities that we have planned. Um, and that's again in August 7th through 10th. Um, and then, of course, um, we're here to celebrate and worship our great God, and one of the ways we do that is through giving. So if you brought an offering today, there is an offering box in back that you're welcome uh, to leave there. But I am also very, very grateful, I think you are too, for this cr great country we live in and the freedoms that we enjoy. I mean, Jesus, of course, purchased our ultimate and eternal freedom, uh, but we celebrate uh, freedoms in this country to worship him openly, and and uh, I th I'm so grateful for that, that opportunity. Opportunity. So we're going to remember that a little bit uh, in a special way. But I want to first pray, and then I'm going to play a video to help us focus and tune our hearts together. Lord, thank you for uh, your church. Thank you for uh, including us in your, your plans and including us in your family, God, letting us be your children. Uh, it's so awesome to know you in such a personal way, and it's all because of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this country that we live in. We, we are grateful for all who went before us, who uh, sacrificed themselves so that we can have the freedoms we, we enjoy. And, and while the devil might want to encroach on those, we know, God, you are still on the throne. You are still more than able and we still have freedoms to worship you and love you and walk with you and and that will never change because of who you are because Lord Jesus you purchased freedoms for us so we pray in Jesus name that we would uh, tune our hearts with yours this morning and let you minister to us in ways that only you can in Jesus name we pray amen You, Lord, that you are the healer. You are the rock. You are the one who keeps us in the palm of your hands. Lord of all creation. 
sunshine of water, earth, and sky. Heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our
his force Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us Then what could stand again? And if our God is for us Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us What could stand again? What could stand again? Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Thank you Lord, thank you for who you are, who you've been, who you will be, for all that you are. We give you praise this morning. You are the first. You go before. You are the last. Lord, you're the encore. Your name in light. For all to see. As God beholds. Declare your glory. Glory in the highest, glory in the highest, glory in the highest. Apart from you, there is no God, light of
we know that the uh, heavenly hosts are singing that all the time, all day long, bringing you glory, singing of your holiness. And we join our hearts with theirs. We join our voices with theirs. We proclaim that you are our God. You alone deserve all glory. You alone deserve all honor. You alone are the worthy one, Lord Jesus. That you would give your life for sinners like us. Church, you may be seated. I kind of wish I played that video right about now. Because I don't know about you, I, I actually do know about some of you. We all need healing in one way or another. God sustains us, and I'm so grateful for that. You know, 19 years ago yesterday, my father went to be with the Lord. Ultimate freedom on the 4th of July, I think. Pretty cool. And I remember when, when he did, God used that. God used my father's passing as an opportunity to, to bring some reconciliation to my brother and I, who had been estranged for too long. We both wanted to find our way back to a friendship, a relationship, but God used that, uh, my dad's passing, as an opportunity for us to find that reconciliation, that restoration. This weekend, um, any moment, any, any time now, I expect today anyway, my mom will join him in heaven. And that's okay because she's ready and uh, we don't want to see her suffer anymore. And what's cool is that God is already using her heavenly birthday, as it were, to bring some restoration to some other family members who have been estranged for far too long. And it's already happening. We can see it. We've been praying for it. And God is using this time to say, what's your priorities? You know me. You, 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 you love me. You say you love me. You sing my praises. But are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to lay down the offenses? And that's happening in my family. And, and I bring that up not to draw attention to myself, but to remember that there is one whose death restores us to life because of Jesus we can be restored to the Lord, to the Father, to the Creator and to each other because God forgives us, we can forgive because God loves us, we can love because God loves us, our land can be healed so we're going to sing one more song and I would like our hearts to see it as we sing as a prayer to God to do what he is so good at doing. Like the uh, verse in Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. So before we sing the song, I'm going to actually pray. Lord, would you heal our land? Would you heal our families? Would you heal our community? Would you heal uh, not just from a, a virus, God, but from the virus of sin? the virus of offenses, division, and all that comes with it. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would revive your church. You would restore us to healthy relationships with each other, especially with you. Do the amazing, Lord. Breathe on your 
faithfulness. You honor your children. You honor the prayers of your people. We lift our hearts before you today for our land, for our communities, for our state, for our families. Lord, we need you. And we thank you, God, that you are more than happy to, 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 to pour out your divine 
presence, your power, your victory. Lord, you pour, poured out your spirit at Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And you have been working even before then, but ever since, to be sure. And Lord, we pray that your spirit would be poured out once again and that you would revive us and be glorified through your church as we love others because of your love in us. And even now, as we worship you in the word, I pray that, God, you would bless us by writing that word on our hearts, that you would change us from glory to glory, and that in everything we say and do, you would re be grateful, you would re <laughs> receive our glad adoration through your name. In your name we pray, amen. This morning we have a, a treat. Um, Crawfordsville friend and my dear brother for many years, Ed Skipper is here and he's going to open God's word with us. So Ed, why don't you come? So when the COVID-19 crisis began, I had some waves of anxiety about getting sick, about the economy, about what the world looked like in the future. And uh, I was disturbed and I knew what to do. Uh, rejoice in the Lord. And so I said, oh no, I'm full of anxiety. I need to sing. <laughs> I need to worship. And I did, and it worked. And that anxiety is replaced with confidence in God. But we need some alternatives to anxiety, don't we? That's what we're talking about today. So I want you to do this. I am going to recite this passage that I'm going to be talking about today. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to listen to what are the alternatives to anxiety the Apostle Paul writes here in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9? So close your eyes and listen for these alternatives to anxiety. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. All right, you can open your eyes again. So let's look at verse 4. What is it that we're to do, and how often? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. It's a good reminder because my tendency is to complain. And I forget what Ephesians 1, 3 says, which is, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. That calls for rejoicing. Now, I was reading a very interesting article in the Oregonian years ago, and it told me this. In 1992, there was a cargo ship halfway between Seattle and China, ran into a storm, and dropped 20 boxes of yellow rubber duckies into the ocean. It was assumed that they were lost at sea. But actually what happened was they started an 11-year journey across half the globe and over three oceans. If you find one of these rubber duckies on the Atlantic Ocean coast, you can receive a $100 uh, savings card or savings bond from the company that issued the ducks. Here's what happened. They floated up past Alaska, and the experts think that they got frozen into ice packs in the Bering Sea and crossed over the North Pole at a speed of one mile per day. That's pretty slow. Five years to cross over from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean, and then those ice packs began to melt, and the ducks began to bob around in the Atlantic Ocean again, white now instead of yellow. But despite all of the direct sun that they were in, and the storms, and the cold, 
and the wind and the waves, they didn't lose their smile. <laughs> but they have an advantage over us. This smile was grafted into the plastic, right? And we want to be like them. Through whatever happens, we rejoice in the Lord. Don't lose our smile. Now, if someone were to investigate Christianity and wonder what the Bible says without reading it, but come to conclusions about what it says by watching our lives... They might think that instead of it saying rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice, that the Bible actually says complain about things always. I say it again, complain. <laughs> Hopefully that I wouldn't, they wouldn't conclude that from my life. You know, I was in college age when my friends and I decided we were going to hike around Mount Adams in southern Washington, which is a lar large mountain, 12,000 feet. And uh, when we arrived at our camp, we had a bunch of people with us, uh, it was dark. So we couldn't see anything other than we set up our tent, went to bed, got up in the morning, and I looked out. Unbeknownst to me, there's a beautiful lake right where we camped, and behind the lake is the mountain rising up to the sky in just overwhelming beauty. I mean, it was breathtakingly beautiful. And the thought occurred to me, we've been here all night, we socialized last night in the dark, and then we slept, and all this while this scene was here, and I didn't know it, because it was dark. And so it is with the Lord. The Lord continues to be who he is. And it's true that Jesus has done what he's done, whether we're noticing it or not. So to rejoice in the Lord is to stop and say, oh yeah, I remember who you are. <laughs> and there's so many ways to rejoice in him. We can name his characteristics. We can say, Lord, you're wise, you're trustworthy, you're good, you're loving, you're holy, you're righteous, you're powerful, you're sovereign. Or we can remember what Jesus has done for us. Jesus, you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You live in us. You prepared a place for us that can't perish, spoil, or fade. So many ways to rejoice in the Lord. And I want to encourage you to be intentional about that every day. Because I don't know about you, but I get overwhelmed by this world and what's going on, particularly today. And I need a reprieve. And I need perspective. And I get that when I think about who the Lord is and what he's done. You know, have you noticed that when the moon is on the horizon... It looks larger. I'm thinking of a full moon in particular. It looks larger than when it's up in the middle of the sky. Have you noticed that? I sure have. It's like, wow, it looks small up there, and it looks bigger when it's down low. And I was told in college, whether this is right or not, that the reason for that is that your brain has something to compare the moon with when it's on the horizon. So it, it, it interprets it as larger because it's comparing it to the objects that it can see, but when it's up in the middle of the sky, it has nothing to compare with. So your brain interprets it as being small. There's something similar that goes on with the problems and the circumstances of our life. When we get our eyes on the size of our God... The things of our life shrink in our own mind and heart. So rejoice in the Lord always. Then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. That's good advice, isn't it? The Lord is near. Now my commentators disappointed me and tell me that the Lord is near. Probably what Paul means is the Lord's coming is near. Most of us think he's close by, which is true, both those things. Look, in verse 6, I want you to notice what we're to do. Actually, don't do this. Instead, do this. What are we not to do? And what do we do to do instead? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Have you ever tried to tell somebody that was anxious not to be anxious? Someone that was worried said, stop worrying, honey. Did it work? Did they just go, oh, you're right, boom, and they stopped worrying? Not usually. Have you ever tried to tell yourself, hey, don't be anxious. Knock it off. 
Did it work? We need an alternative, don't we? We saw that one alternative is to rejoice in the Lord. And here's another alternative, and that is to, in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I pastored in Springfield for 10 years, and I thought I'd be there my whole life. I said to God, God, I'm not going anywhere unless you tell me to leave. I'm staying put. It doesn't matter how hard it is or anything. I'm, putting, I'm, I'm here for life unless you redirect me. Well, there came a day when I felt like the Lord was redirecting me, and it was hard. It was disappointing. I was having trouble giving up the church. So I went for a walk along the Willamette River, and I noticed a big rock. And I said, rock? You represent the church. Willamette River, you represent God. And I picked up that rock and I heaved it into the river, symbolizing I'm releasing the church to you. So what do you do when you present something to someone? I I possess it now. I give it to you and you possess it. That's what we want to do with our anxiousness. I own it now, I'm presenting it to you. Peter puts it this way in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So what is it today that you're anxious about that you need to cast on to him? Will you do that? He'll take it. Now, if you do that, instead of being anxious, that is, if you, with thanksgiving, pray and present your request to God, what will God do? That's what this verse 7 answers. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That means it's supernatural, it's a God thing. When you, when you present your petitions with thanksgiving, instead of being anxious, God guards your heart with a supernatural peace that's beyond explanation. I, had, I, I will always remember this, experiencing the reality of this verse one day. I was uh, pastoring in Lebanon, and, and the parsonage was about a block from the church, and I was walking to the church from the parsonage, and I had had a rough night's sleep because I had been stewing about something. Somebody had made a request of me that I wasn't comfortable with, and I knew that if I said no, they'd be upset with me. But I also knew that if I said yes, that would be going against my better judgment. I didn't think it was God's will that I said yes to them. So I stewed about it, worried, flipped and tossed all night. What do I do? What do I do? And right on my way to church, it dawned on me, I am owning their response, which is not mine to own. I can just give them over to God. And do you know when I, that peace of God just came on me like that? I had been anxious for hours through the night and beyond. It just went away just like that. And so I thought, wow, that is Philippians 4, 7, working out in real life. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so this is a military term. This guarding is a military term. It's talking about as if you have an uh, army guarding your heart and mind with the peace of God against whatever intruders are coming in. Now, notice in verse 8, what is to occupy our minds? This relates to anxiety and a lot of other things, too. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. The key battle in our life is in our minds, what we choose to think about. There's nothing more important than that. 
Do you know that somebody said, I don't know how in the world they measure this, but that the average person has 70,000 thoughts a day. That means you've got, what, another 50, 40 left today? 40 or 50,000 thoughts left to manage today. <laughs> you thought you weren't important. You didn't have an important job. That's an important job, managing 70,000 thoughts a day. And Paul says, think about what's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about those things. Martin Luther said, and he was talking about lust. This would also refer to or apply to uh, ruminating about somebody who has wounded you. He says this, a bird may land on your head, but don't let it build a nest there. Isn't that good advice? Like, okay, nip it in the bud before it starts picking up momentum going the wrong direction. I pray sometimes for myself and Teen Challenge students that I get to mentor uh, that God would nip it in the bud when we start going down a negative thought pattern, that we would see it, God would reveal it to us, and we'd say, no, I'm going to think about what's true and right. Now, you might think to yourself, doesn't matter what I think because nobody else knows. And you say, well, God knows. We know God knows. But still, the rest of you don't know. So I can have my own privacy in my mind and do what I want in there. Bad idea. <laughs> because it is the key battleground in our life. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, you may or may not be a football fan, but I'm going to ask you if you've heard of these names. Would you raise your hand if you have heard of Joe Namath? I thought so. Uh, John Hanna, I got maybe three on that, uh, Tom Brady, O.J. Simpson, now granted he was known for things besides football as well, but, uh, John Elway, Tom Mack, all right, all of, those, all of those players, except for two of them, were quarterbacks or running backs. Tom Mack and John Hanna are linemen. Hardly anybody has heard of them. But I got to tell you, in football, if you don't have the offensive line opening holes for the running back, they're not going far. If you don't have the offensive line protecting the quarterback from great big guys that are trying to come and tackle them, you're not going to be very successful regardless of how good a quarterback you are. There's nothing more important than the offensive line. I want to tell you, our thought life is like that. It doesn't get the credit it deserves, but it's the key to everything else in our life. So let's think about things that are lovely and true and good. And in verse 9, I want you to notice what the command is and what the promise is. Whatever you have learned or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So we are to, the command, put into practice those things we've learned, in this case, uh, observing Paul or hearing Paul's teaching. But in general, what we learn, particularly from the Scripture, put it into practice, and the promise is that the God of peace will be with you. You know, when I read the word or hear the word proclaimed, it forces the issue in my life, and I can't stay the same anymore because I have a decision to make now. I've heard truth, and I'm either going to practice it or I'm going to ignore it or disobey it. If I practice it, it's going to result in growth. If I ignore it or disobey it, it's going to result in going the wrong way and maybe hardening my heart towards God. It reminds me of when I learned to drive in the Dalles, Oregon. If you know the Dalles, Oregon, it's on a hill, and... Uh, I'm 15 years old. I'm driving a 1971 yellow Super Beetle, and my mom is my trainer because my father had passed away at that point. 
And I would, and I'm learning, and, and Volkswagens have clutches, right? They're manual transmissions. I'm stopping on a hill, and a car pulls up right behind me on the hill. Now, it, if you have learned to dr uh, drive manual transmission, you know, it takes a long time to learn how to let the clutch out and press the gas and get that catching point just right. You kill it, it lurches forward, all this stuff. Uh, you roll back. It takes a long time to learn. Once you learn it, it's, it's fine. But until then, it's kind of scary, right? So car would pull up behind me, and I would go, oh, no. Because once I let my right foot off the brake, something's going to happen. We're not staying put. I'm either going forward or I'm going back. And that's how it is when I read the Scripture or hear the Scripture. It forces the issue. I'm either hardening my heart towards God and going the wrong way, or I'm getting closer to God according to what I do with it. Maturity comes from this. Hearing or reading the Word and putting it into practice and then doing it again over and over again. There's no shortcuts. Nobody gets mature any other way but applying scriptural truth as they live their life over and over again. It's the only way. So that's why Paul says, put it into practice. So let's make sure we put it into practice. I'm going to read this passage one last time, and I want you to ask the question. Here's one question I ask sometimes of myself. What changes in attitude or behavior is God asking me to make based on this passage? I love that question. I also ask the question, if I took this seriously, what difference would it make in my life? So let's ask that question of Philippians 4, 4 to 9 that we talked about this morning. If I took this seriously, what difference would it make in my life? So listen carefully with that perspective. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything... By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen? So what's that one carry away? Maybe more than one, but hopefully one at least. That one thing, maybe that the Holy Spirit is saying, here's something to grab onto and put into practice today. All right. I just want to mention, uh, before I turn it over to John to close out this morning, that I have some bookmarks back in the, you call it the foyer, entryway, whatever. Um, and if you uh, want to hear something called Truth Talk with Ed Skipper, that's me, uh, I have little four-minute devotionals three days a week on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and on podcasts, whatever form you want, format you want. And they are hopefully practical and engaging and biblically sound. So it, because it's new, I just put, it's, you go to my website, heartofrevival.net slash truth talk. I wrote that on those cards. So if you're interested, uh, I'd love to see you there, so to speak. Or I'd love to, for you to see me there. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you for allowing me to share with you this morning. And John? Can we, uh, can we thank Ed so much? Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. If, uh, if you have been catching our uh, midweek encouragement on Wednesday nights or whenever you choose to 
view them. Um, I think a couple weeks ago, we, uh, we actually uh, highlighted Ed and his truth talks, and so you can see one of those there as well. Um, but Ed is um, not only a dear friend, but he's uh, uh, an evangelist. He's uh, one of the, the leaders of the, uh, um, it's called Transform Lebanon, but the pastor's group in, in Lebanon, and also uh, participates in the pastoral ministry uh, group in Sweet Home as well. And, uh, and there's so much more to his, his life that is such a blessing. But continue to pray for him, uh, because God is using him in wonderful ways. Uh, Teen Challenge is one of those. He, when, a, when we're allowed to, he, he uh, reaches out to those um, with the gospel uh, on campuses, um, like at uh, the college campuses and such. Uh, one day we're going to have people coming back to schools, and we'll be able to do that. Um, but uh, meanwhile, thank you so much for that reminder that uh, our, our peace comes from the Lord. And uh, let's let's pray. God, thank you that you are the Prince of Peace, and that, that the devil can't rob our peace unless we let him. And so I pray uh, in Jesus' name that you would enable us by your Spirit to keep our focus on you, to keep our heart towards you, and, and that we would indeed uh, rejoice uh, and, and live in your priorities, your values, Lord, instead of what the world would have us uh, live in. Uh, Lord, forgive us, forgive me for spending more time than necessary on the news and, and, and what's going on around me when you're the one who knows what you're doing in the midst of all that. You're the one who's working in the midst of heartache and challenge and, and trials and tri tribulations. You're the one who turns those, in, uh, works those for our good, as you said in, in Romans, that uh, you can take anything and, and work it for together for our good. And, and we know that you're doing just that. So we pray you would continue to do so. We pray that you'd especially draw uh, near to those of us who are um, struggling in any way. I know there's some here who have physical challenges uh, that, that need um, healing. And, and we pray that indeed you would heal uh, them, whether they're here physically or whether they're at home. Uh, we pray, God, that you would raise us up to be the shining trophies of your mercy and your victory, uh, victorious power. We pray, God, for um, the families, God, that are struggling relationally, uh, for those who especially are struggling spiritually, Lord, uh, with their faith and their confidence, uh, given what we're going through. It's, it's, it's easy to, to wonder, uh, where are you, Lord, when in fact you're right in the midst of it, uh, and you're more than able to to uh, to help us be the overcomers because you are the overcomer. And we pray that indeed you would um, enable us, God, to, to live above the circumstance and to be the light and the hope and the love uh, with you living in us. I thank you so much for these opportunities to draw together and worship you and receive from you. Uh, go with us, Lord, that you, your light might continue to shine through us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Keep praying for an outdoor service next week. It looks like the weather's going to be good. So.